Alrighty, here's the video review for Toy World's Orion, aka Optimus Prime, the IDW version of Optimus Prime here. And uh, and he's really kind of nice. He's actually a much better figure than I was expecting. I heard a lot of good buzz online, so I went ahead and picked one up from uh, Captured Prey. And it got here today, and it's surprisingly really nice. It's uh, well, not really surprisingly, like I said, I, I'd heard good things, but... Um, I was all prepared to write this one off, and I really, really like him. He may become my definitive prime on my shelf, or at least my go-to prime. He's he's a good size. He's a nice, uh, slightly bigger, a little bigger, a little taller than Voyager Springer um, from the Generations line. If you've got that, uh, like a, like a good size. He's you know bulky. He's solid. Um, I really quite like. He's just he's just the right size in in, in my mind for a, a, a nice Optimus Prime figure. And we'll get into some size comparisons here in just a minute. Um, he comes in the standard, I don't want to say minimalist, uh, basic is, is probably the word I'm looking for, Toy World packaging. It's just a tray, a box, a couple of product pictures on the back, uh, not, not cluttered, very basic packaging, just a plastic tray twist tied in with uh, a couple of accessories. The, uh, the gun and the matrix in his chest uh, are packaged in separate little packages, with packages divots. Uh, in in the plastic tray, but yeah, um, and the red is actually like looking from what I'm, it's a little closer to what than what I've seen in a lot of pictures here on what I'm seeing on the screen. But even in person, like from what looking if I look above the camera, the red is much more vibrant and saturated than it's even showing up here on the screen. So um, so yeah, his colors are good. They're, they're, it's not a perfect red. It, it it's 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 really not a perfect red, but it's. It's really nice. It's, it's really close. Like my, my general opinion of this guy is that he's really, really good. I'm, I'm very happy with him. I feel like maybe one more pass of refining uh, would have fixed all the little nagging things that are bugging me about this. Because there's, there's nothing major. There's no one major flaw in this guy. Um, there's a couple of little things that I feel could have been made a little bit more elegant, a little bit more refined uh, in the final product, especially in the transformation to, to vehicle mode. Uh, on the on the final figure, but but all in all, he's really really nice. A very solid figure from Toy World. Um, so yeah, uh, real quick, we'll go ahead and and I am doing him from robot to vehicle mode because I feel like that's really where you're going to need the help. From vehicle mode to robot mode is fairly intuitive. You've got a pretty good idea of what Optimus Prime in robot mode looks like, and um, and that's and and it's it's not too hard. Going into vehicle mode is uh, is a little bit more tricky. Because uh, you got to figure out where everything fits versus unfolding it. Um, folding something down is a little harder than folding things out uh, in some cases. Um, and also the instructions are just show you one way. I guess, you know, reverse the order of instructions to convert to robot should be written down here. But um, but also they're very tiny. Like, you know, there's my, the pictures are not big. And, and in some cases, like, because they're paint, like a lot of the steps are painted this dark blue... It's really hard to make out some of the detail on which pieces are moving. And so you have a good idea of, like, something in this general area should move, but it's hard to tell exactly what has changed, especially when they change perspectives. Like, here's the underside of the truck, and now this piece, here's the piece in the final position on top with no, here's what it used to look like, especially right up here on the arms. So, um, so uh, you know, when, when you've got it in hand, you can kind of, if you know you're supposed to be moving something in that general area, you can kind of figure it out. But they're not as clear as they could be. I'm actually going to even leave these kind of open off to the side just in case I need to reference them. Because, like, it's fairly straightforward when you know what you're doing. But there's a few little bits that are kind of like, okay, where should I be touching now? Um, he does come with a, a nice little plastic stat card. Which, again, very basic. It's, it's a lot like the packaging. There's a picture of him on the front with his name. And then a couple just basic pictures on the back with a row of numbers on the bottom. But it's, but it's a nice credit cardy, shiny plastic type card. It's very solid. And that pretty much covers what's in the box. So while we've got him here in robot mode, let's go ahead and do some size comparisons before we get into everything else. Here he is with the uh, Deluxe Orion packs from the Generations line. So you can see much taller than a Deluxe, although he is kind of a small Deluxe. Um, and you can tell that, especially when compared with Animated Optimus Prime, who is also a Deluxe. I just to show those off there, and then uh, here he is with the here's the uh, the basic uh, 
Generations Legends Scouts, whatever they're calling them now, uh, that came with the uh, the Roller Power Master. And you can see the design similarities. They're both based off IDW Prime. This one has his wind vane stored on his back versus up on the shoulders, but they've got that kind of open chest. Um, I do feel like this chest could be closed a little bit more, and you can close it a little bit more than it is now. But um, you can see here it's opened up a little bit. But you can see a lot of the similar details here and how the, uh, the lights on the abdomen and uh, even the... Uh, the angled pieces here above the uh, above the foot, how the foot kind of comes down. There's the silver, and then angles out into the foot itself. So you can see they're clearly both based on the same comic book design, um, and they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, he has a lot of weakness, a lot more weaknesses just due to his size, um, and he's got this kibble. But uh, but that they're, they're they're both based off the same thing. And mentioning that, one of the things you can do when he comes packed, these come flat. And they're clearly, if you, if you saw on that one, these are clearly designed to come out a little bit, just to give that a little bit of that extra angled forward toward the foot. Um, and, just, and just give a little bit more dynamic visually to his, uh, to his lower legs. So yeah, um, these, these panels on the back, these are his wind vane. You can, the, the, now the, that's the thing, the pictures on the box, I don't know if they've been photoshopped or, or what, show these sitting much lower, let's see here. See here you can see, it, they look like they're about the same height away from the black bits here, but uh, you can see the, uh, here the hinges look like they're sitting right along this line, and they can't go any lower than this the way they're pegged in. This piece doesn't slide down or anything, so they do stick, like here it looks like they're sitting roughly even with, with his back here, at, whereas uh, on the actual figure, they sit up much higher. And, and they don't slide down at all. So a little bit of a, a tweakiness there, but all in all, not horrible. Um, also, these right now should be folded down. These were folded up. These should fit, fill out the legs like that. That's my fault. Yeah, it's my fault. There are more children in the world today. Anyway, so yeah, there he is in robot mode. And uh, we'll get into... Uh, his transformation. Oh, well, what I was talking about these is you can, if you wish, uh, you, you can either pop these off and reverse them. You pop this off, turn it over, and plug it in over here if you want. And that holds them down a little bit, but you still have the, these bits, these curvy bits coming on his back. You can also, on the box, they have them kind of rotated out like this, which kind of hides the tips, but then kind of gives them these chunks behind him. Uh, if, if you don't mind about symmetry, you can actually tuck one under the other like that. So they're still sitting there across his back, but visually from the front, makes him look more like that, which isn't bad. Um, probably, like, my one, uh, one minor issue of breakage here on this is that you can see there's two tabs on this, where these two stick together, these two little tabs here. There was a lower one over here. I don't know when it broke. It may have even come broken. I don't remember, I mean, like, I was very careful when I was transforming it. I don't remember having any issues with these pieces that would have snapped that off. But uh, one of these little teensy, teensy taps is snapped off, and you kind of see a little bit of a stress mark up on this one. It's not the end of the world. Um, it's such a tiny tab that it, you know, it, it doesn't, with, all, with the other three still intact, it's not horribly affecting the transformation or how everything holds together in vehicle mode. But um, like I said, I'm just pointing it out for the sake of being you know, thorough, thorough and complete um, that did snap off. Minor issue, but uh, there you have it. I've heard some horrible quality control complaints on this guy. I have not had many of those. Uh, I think the only other one I have is there's a little stress mark right here. And that even looks like it may have been when the pen, pin originally went in. Because it hasn't gotten worse and it hasn't... I've kind of put that through its paces today. And it doesn't look like it's getting worse or in danger of breaking. It looks like it just got a little stressed when, when they originally put the pin in. Uh, and, and those are the two issues I have with mine uh, in relates to quality control. Now, like I said earlier, you can kind of, these are on hinge panels like this. They're supposed to plug in like that. Um, they come forward later, but you can pull them up if you want to have a little bit more of a coherent chest. You can kind of pull them up like that. Gaps a little bit on the chest, but not too bad, and, and give him more of a square chest, kind of cover that matrix panel. I've seen some people paint inside these windows and you know the detail behind them and it's actually pretty easy because the windows are not actually glued in if you, you like sometimes when i'm transforming them they'll just pop 
right off. Um, I don't know if they were intended to be glued in, uh, but just this little piece just tabs in and then it clips in over here. Um, you can see there's a little tab there. So it's really easy to pop the windows off if you want to decorate or paint behind the windows. Um, I've seen silver and I've seen some blue. Personally, I think blue would work a little better just because one, there's this thicker post here that if you paint it silver, it's gonna be mostly silver with then suddenly a really dark blue line in the middle of it. But I will say the silvers I've seen have looked pretty decent. Um, also, one of, the, one of my other issues just with this design versus, you know, you can see what they did here with the, uh, you see the Autobot symbol in his chest. Um, and, and that's more like it should look from the comic. Um, this has his matrix, and I just don't feel like Prime would be walking around with the matrix visible right there behind his chest. <laughs> just my thing. But again, you run into painting, uh, if you try to paint this, uh, this piece right here has those support pieces that are going to, you're not going to be able to paint accurately. They're going to make a much darker blue. So you could paint the inner of this silver or whatever, or a, a blue. And like I said, blue would probably match a little better if you can find a matching one. But if you want to make that opaque painting silver back there, not really going to work. He does have a little removable matrix here. It's, it's actually a really nice little matrix. Good light piping uh, on it. it kind of makes it look like it's glowing. Um, just a very neat little matrix. Which stores in his chest. The posability on this guy is really nice. He's got a lot of great... Uh, he's got a lot of joints. got a lot of uh, range of motion. Uh, you know, ratcheting joints here at the shoulders. The shoulders go up and down, but that's mostly for transformation. Uh, in and out, a swivel, a hinge. Um, his hands are kind of like old school masterpiece, and like there's not individual fingers, they just, these fingers open and close. And there's a wrist swivel. And that's pretty much it for the hands. Uh, good in and out, side to side legs, uh, ratchet knees, you can hear those really strong, clicky ratchets, uh, thigh swivel. And he's got, um, he doesn't have ankle tilts, uh, his feet do rotate a little bit and let you get a little bit of uh, movement out of them. And one of the things that's nice is the heel piece folds up for transformation, but if you've got him in a pose where his maybe his foot isn't sitting quite flat, you can actually fold this down and get a little extra bit of support for non-flat-footed poses, which is really kind of nice. I actually used that in a pose earlier today, and it was really well done, and when I figured out I could use that, so I was very happy to see that. Um, but yeah, all in all, he's got some really nice posability. Um, I, I do wish this bumper maybe folded up a little bit, because see, this is his bumper right here. And you can bring it up and kind of hide it in the backpack if you want, but then you've got this piece sitting support strut. And it's not as visible from the front, but, um, but you can see it's clearly intended to tab in right there. And it just kind of widens the waist a little bit down here, which uh, if the whole waist was wide, if it had a way, if it kind of flipped, if the sides kind of flipped up and filled in the waist, it would be one thing, but just having a couple little bumps there on his butt um, is a little weird. It looks a little better, I think, like that. He does have a waist swivel as well. Um, and again, that's something you would lose if you flip that piece up. At least not really lose, but you know, it's going to get in the way of that. So yeah, there's Robot Moon. Go ahead and take his gun out. And let's go ahead and start turning him into a truck. First off, turn his head around and just fold it right down there into his body. Much like just about every Optimus ever. Uh, his legs just slide out here at the knee. Um, it's, it's, it's not much, it's very subtle, but it does slide out to the edge there. Just kind of push the knee in like that. And then these panels open up. Actually, this is where I actually want to fold these flat. These open up. And again, the instructions make it look like you fold them up and then just keep folding them around to be flat against this. But you actually fold them up like this and then rotate them like that to sit uh, down here. And again, there's a little tab here. There's a lot of little places like this where there's a little tab here that has to go somewhere. And in order to get it where you need to go, you almost kind of, you have to kind of pull, lift up, or pull, you kind of force pieces past each other. If you do it right here, if you rotate it around a little bit, a little bit like this, if you do it at an angle, it alleviates the stress on that tab, and it's much easier to, uh, it alleviates the conflict with that tab and, and makes it easier to just fold down. So if, you, so if, you, if you're thinking about it, as you, as you lift it up, about halfway through it, flip it around right here, and then it'll, it'll, you won't have as many conflicts with parts moving past each other. So you got that, and then those, you can see there's a couple tabs here. These will, you can go ahead and try to snap these together. I find they don't hold 
super well until you've got everything done, but you can go ahead and snap these together. And you take these side panels and you flip them up just like this. And again, there's just a little bit of, like, if you, you'll notice if you fold this up by itself, it can fold up just fine, nice and flat. Um, nice and flat, no, no conflict, even goes in a little bit. But when this is down, there's just enough resistance here where it hits the knee that it wants to push out. And you can kind of see there's a little bit of a stress mark here too. Um, now again, there's some tabs here. This will lock into place in vehicle mode, but I don't know why there's just that, there's just like, like a millimeter of clearance that if they gave it, it wouldn't keep trying to push itself out like that and it wouldn't put any stress on this pin. So that's what I was talking about when I said maybe one more pass of refining this guy down may have, uh, would have solved a few of my little issues and that's one of those little issues. Um, it doesn't look like, again, it doesn't look like it's going to break. Um, it, it's not putting nearly enough stress on it for that, but it's just, why have it at all? When it would have taken such so little effort to kind of trim this down a little bit or shave off just a tiny little bit and make it so it doesn't conflict there. But again, that's just the way it is. Now, once you've done that, and here's, here's a little, actually a really pretty cool bit. His wheels are now exposed, you can see in the legs. And you actually pull these out and rotate them around. And again, there's a little tab. You kind of have to, at one point, you kind of just kind of push it. And because these are pinned in, you can't do anything about it. You just got to push it a little bit. Not, not a lot of force, but a little bit more force than you than you think. Uh, it does hit like a snag. You pull it, you slide it out like that, rotate it. And right about here, there's a little, as you can see, there's a couple little tabs in there. These little tabs right here, uh, right here on the, on the top of this. Hit a little snag where there's a little port in there that this is going to plug into, but it is there, and you just kind of got to, not hard, but you do have to force it past that. And once that's done, just take the whole waist and turn it around. And we'll start on the arms. From the, on the back of the arms, I'm going to open this up and fold the fists up into the what, what, what is essentially the underside of the arm. And then close that up. That's real simple. Basic step. Again, just about every prime has it at some point. And again, these panels are kind of arched out. You can see how they're arched out like in the comic book. And you can just go ahead and flatten those down a little bit. So they're flat against the arm. You can have them that way in robot mode as well. But they are intended in robot mode to just, just arc out a little bit. You come back here, and up here on the top of these fins, there's a little, there's a flap that needs to come up. And it's hard to get to, but uh, there's a little piece right here that flips up and, and kind of completes that fin. You can see there's one versus the other. And again, you just kind of get under there and flip that up. And then these are going to flip up onto the top like this. And these whole panels right here, and once that's done, these panels right here unlock. They unpeg, you can see there's a peg right there, from here. And then these pieces rotate. Uh, and, here, and here's where I'm saying, here's where those tabs that I was mentioning, one of them had broken off, come into play. You rotate these pieces together to be flat on those back like that. And then these halves snap together just like that. Now again, missing that tab in the back is not affecting this in any way, shape, or form. And honestly, these ball joints are tight enough that even if you didn't have those tabs at all, this piece would still sit together just fine. They, they, they don't lock lock. They're just kind of more a guide, I guess. So it's not the end of the world that those tabs are broken, but it is a little disappointing that that one broke. Although again, it's such a tiny piece that you, if I wasn't, I mean, I don't even know how I noticed it. It was just kind of happened to look right at the right place at the right time to catch that. So now you see, you kind of see how the top of the cab's coming together. Uh, this piece, you open these up, you want to go ahead and fold this up. And this piece right here, you want to fold out. If you leave it folded in, you're going to have a gap in, in the front of the trailer. Flip that little red piece forward and then plug it back into place because then you're going to get, you know, this type of thing. All right, so now we're done with that. Bring the arms up like this. And again, here's one of those spots where it's a little confusing because you bring the, the whole arm up and then just this piece up here on top, this little panel right here, rotates around like that. So it's facing out to the side. And it 
depending on, and this is where you want to make sure that you pop the, the shoulders up. Yeah. Because you need that clearance to rotate the panel. There, on the arm. Checking my time here. All right, and then these panels come forward. Look at this. Just the, and then these come forward mostly just to get out of the way for transformation. Once those panels come forward, you can bring these back. This whole piece right here folds back like that. Now you can see where the truck's coming together. You can go ahead and flip the uh, the, the heel panels up and fold these down like this to meet them, just like that. And you can see he's got some tail lights there going on. So now you've got Prime pretty much like this. And then these panels right here. I know some people were saying that they've had some problems with these panels popping off of here. And uh, some say they broke. I think one person said they broke. The other people just say there's some stress marks where they pop off and they're loose. When you do this, you don't just want to grab it by the wheel and flip it down. You want to grab this whole panel. Make sure you grab it, grab it by the red. Um, like kind of right up here and, and pull the whole assembly down. Not just, don't put, don't put your finger on the wheel and push down. Grab it by this um, and you'll avoid a whole lot of issues. So that comes down just like that. And then this, the, the grill piece gets pulled forward. And make sure you got these flat down so there's clearance. And the whole grill piece pops forward just a, eh, about a quarter, half an inch, maybe. Yeah, I guess about half an inch. And then you bring these panels down like this. Flip them forward and open. And these panels come down. And you see there's, there's a double hinge there. They, they kind of come... There you go. Uh, here, here's where it is in arm mode. And then it comes out and up. And the whole panel rotates down. Like... I'm gonna have, let me make sure this is still facing the back. Like you want to have this like this. This whole panel comes down, and here's where we start getting into the pieces that move past each other in ways that I feel could be more refined. Because I feel like, like once you get to this stage, you're folding this piece down like that, and then you've got to get. I guess you can get this piece out of the way here. It helps if you fold, go ahead and fold that up a little bit. You've got to plug, this this tab has to get past this lower wheel piece and plug into there. And then when you bring this forward, this has got to, this tab's back into here. This folds forward. And then here, there's two tabs here, one of which is gonna peg into here. This tab has to go behind the grill and then there's a, and then it's gonna come up and this piece is gonna tab into here. So there's a lot of tabs that you kinda have to rough house around like you get that locked in and then you got to get this tab into the top you got to make sure this doesn't fall back at least this is this is the, the problem there's a tab on this piece that tabs into the top of the grill this piece tabs behind the grill and you're trying to get them both done at the same time with how that transformation works and then there's a tab here that then goes on top of this so there you go getting that all tabbed in is kind of a pain in the butt once you do it, it's good, and it's solid, and it's nice, and this should not have come out. And see, now this is out in front of that. So if that pops out in front of it, you got to <laughs> pop this back apart. See? Just all these tabs. They're, they're nice. They make the vehicle mode very secure, but getting them all in place is kind of a pain in the butt the first time and the third time, and in this case, I think the seventh time. Oh, I don't require having quite this much trouble. <laughs> All right, so it looks like we're gonna have to unpeg this. Let's get this whole assembly out of here. Which will let us move this, open this back up. Come on. There we go. Okay, we pop the window off. Push that back in. Make sure this fits flipped out. Okay, push that back in. <laughs> then close this up and in. There we go. Now that that piece is stuck behind that. There we go. Pop the window back on. And now we can bring this piece around and over and under to tab in the three tabs behind eight different things. There we go. So there's half that half of the of the truck. And then this piece just flip up. And again, this piece is on a hinge, and I don't know why. This little tab right here. So you gotta get this tab up. Oh wait, no, that one that one does, so that one folds down. That's the tab that 
tab this in here. And then the tab on the piece with the spoiler uh, tabs into the arm like that. And then this piece, like I said, this piece tabs in under here, and then you fold this back down. So there, there, there's that half of the, of the truck. Now we get to do it all again over here. So again, uh, bring this down, maybe this one side will go easier. Bring that up a little bit, bring this down, flip all this together. So peg all this in up again, get this, kind of pull this down and get this over the, uh, see, that's what I'm talking about. It's hard to, you gotta get this up, get this piece, get the short, okay, you gotta, you gotta bring this back so this has enough clearance to come up. So this can go in behind this piece, which is done, okay. And then this piece needs to tab in over that tab in the middle and behind the uh, behind the grill. And then this piece has to tab up in here and then tab behind the grill and behind this piece at the same time while going over the tab there. There. Ha <laughs> ha! And then this piece rotates up and tabs into the, uh, the spoiler piece, like that. Fold that down. This piece tabs up into the bottom of that. Tab the veins back together. And that may have been where the tab broke earlier at some point. And then, and then this piece, this whole side needs to tab back in from manipulating all of that. And then the whole bumper comes up. You open it up like this, and then these tabs right here tab in under here. Bring it up. Tab it in. And there, finally, is Orion Pax in a very cool truck mode. And again, this is what I'm talking about. If you don't flip this piece up, it's going to look very funny across the top here. So a nice, solid, square truck mode. Um, I like it. I mean, I like it a lot. Again, the Matrix is visible right here through the middle windshield, which I feel is a little off. But uh, but for the most part, it's it's a nice, it's, and, and again, the part of it is just trying to do it on camera. But uh, I didn't have quite as much trouble tabbing all this together. But you can see it, it is kind of a pain to get. You got tabs that go behind and over and under at all at the same time. And if it was just like do this step and this tab behind this and then this whole assembly tabs behind that, that's one thing. But you, these pieces come down and you kind of have to tab them around all of these already established pieces around here at the same time, and especially in the case of trying to tab this in behind the grill while still going, you have to lift this up enough to get behind the grill without snapping the tab on this middle piece that holds it behind there. Um, it is very, especially with the clear plastic, it is very kind of nerve wracking. Um, the gun itself can store, there's a couple tabs here on the back of the gun that allow it to plug right into the back of the cab here, just like that. So you can store his gun behind him. But yeah, there you go. There is Orion in vehicle mode. It's it's actually very, very, very nice. And just real quick here, some uh, size comparisons of him. Uh, here he is with the uh, Deluxe Animated Prime in vehicle mode. Here he is with the Generations Orion Packs. And here he is with the, uh, again, the Hasbro version of this design in vehicle mode. Again, you can see the wind vane. It doesn't quite, it works much better on the Toy World version, obviously. But uh, that wind vane is there on the square, square truck. So yeah, it's a nice, solid figure. It's a lot of fun. Um, I, I, I love the look of it. Um, I wish, like I said, the engineering is very nice. There's some really elegant bits. I love the way the wheels flip around and things like that. I, li I like the wind vane. I like how it kind of covers up the top. Um, and I, I, I like the general just squarish, almost G1-esque type of feel to the vehicle mode. But um, like I said, all those tabs are very scary around here on the front of the vehicle mode. But yeah, it's a nice, solid figure. It's, it's worth picking up. Um, oh, something else I forgot to mention. The wheels here do turn, and, and there's and, and it's molded so there's clearance, so even turned all the way, they do still roll um, in, in both directions. They're, they're not hooked together, so they're, they're not linked, but if you want to have them in like a turning pose, you can uh, 
you can turn those wheels. So yeah, there's Orion packs. Or just Orion. Toy World TW02 Orion. I don't have Hegemon. I kind of want to pick him up to go against him. But there are people on eBay are asking like 250 bucks for him, and I, I don't want to pay that. Um, suppose the Toy World has hinted that they might be making a, a Stealth Bomber Megatron in scale with this one. And I'm all over that if they do. So, Because uh, the Generations one is nice, but he's more in scale with this guy um, than, than this guy. But yeah, there it is, Toy World Orion.